would take the hymnal and say, would you please go to hymn 31? Hymn 31, He Lives, and we will sing all three verses, hymn 31. services this morning to speak to our hearts and Lord just help us to, to be attentive and listen to your word. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated if you would go to him 205. 205. He keeps me singing and we will sing all five verses. Him 205.
So, the Doctrine of Calendar, you're going to hear about this at least three more times. Well, let's see, we've got two services on Sunday, so that would be six, and then on Wednesday. So, so you know, nine times at least, right? So, uh, I know a lot of folks, some folks go out of town for the 4th of July, and uh, we just hope that uh, you'll be here. Uh, some people will leave on Monday, whatever the case may be, we want you here. So mark it on your calendar, July 3rd. All right, everybody, repeat after me. <laughs> yeah, I think y'all y'all get the message. A couple quick uh, prayer requests, and then we'll go uh, to receive the offering. Uh, please continue to pray for Sister Garlene's granddaughter, Shelly Renee. She emailed me on Friday, and so as of Friday, the baby hadn't come, so the plan is that she'll go into the hospital at 5 o'clock this afternoon, and then overnight, they'll, sometime they'll start the in, inducing period, so hopefully uh, the baby will be here tomorrow. Um, uh, a praise along those lines is that uh, uh, her husband, who's uh, in the Marine Corps, will be able to, should be in, in time to be present uh, for his, his daughter's birth. So that's an answer to prayer. And then uh, Shelly Renee's mother, Lori, and we've been praying for her. She'd been having issues, um, physical issues. She had tests done. She'll get the results shortly. But her biggest thing right now, we need to pray. She's not going to be able to be with her daughter when the baby's born due to the COVID-19 restrictions. And so she's a little disappointed with that. And then Sister Garlene's daughter, Robin, need to be praying for her. She has some serious uh, back pain. So uh, please keep her in your prayers. And if you notice, uh, Vanessa and Valerie and their little ones aren't here because all the little ones are sick. So please be praying for them. Uh, you know, they... They tend to get sick together, but they don't tend to get healthy together. <laughs> so we're praying that they will get on the same page and uh, get over this uh, all together. And then lastly, uh, please be praying for the family of Chuck Combs. Um, he went home to be with the Lord on Tuesday, uh, last Tuesday, and his funeral is today. Visitation at 3 with the service at 4. So be praying for them. Uh, for those that are going to be traveling for the funeral. Uh, and please be praying for me that as I uh, officiate that uh, the Lord will uh, comfort them and uh, that they will be ministered to. And Tommy's grandfather is having surgery on the 14th? He's had procedure. Procedure. Uh, he's, you know, you hear people say, well, don't do that half-hearted. Well, his grandfather is. One half of his heart isn't firing properly. And so they're going to go in, evaluate, and decide what exactly they need to do. Right. Okay. All right, Brother Anthony, would you mind ushering this morning? Good to see you back from Croatia. Croatia. Uh, I was afraid that they would keep you. Did they try? I'm sure they did. <laughs> they said, we want this one. He's ours. <laughs> All right, brother. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pray for the offering if you'll re receive it for us. Heavenly Father, again, we come into your presence with a grateful and joyful heart for the many things that you have done for us. You've blessed us in so many ways, and we truly are thankful. Thank you that Anthony was able to have a safe trip home and that he's able to be back with us. We just ask that you would uh, bless he and his family uh, who do sacrifice times of separation like this. Now, we've heard these prayer requests, a lot of folks with physical issues. We ask that you would touch them, that you would give their doctors wisdom. And we do pray for the Chuck Combs family that you would make your presence known to them like maybe never before. And now as we worship you with your tithe and our offering, we ask that you'd accept it from a grateful heart and that it would be used for the furtherance of the gospel through Grace Baptist Church. 
And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
this morning, if you will, to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. You know, uh, I was talking with some folks recently, and uh, we we're comparing traffic and roads and conditions. And uh, I remember when we lived in Georgia, it was like Georgia was the state of perpetual road construction. You know, especially on 75. And uh, they they halted construction and tried to get things cleaned up when they hosted the Olympics. Right, so try to make everything look pretty, but it is uh, always to me. It's always seemed like they're always doing something construction-wise. And uh, I commented, I'd rather drive through Atlanta than I would Orlando, and that holds true any time of day, day or night. I'd much rather drive through Atlanta. You know, uh, here in Pasco County. Being on the east side of the county, if we wanted to go to the west side of the county, you have one out of two choices. You have either 52 or 54. And if there's a major accident on one of them, well, then you have no choice at all, right? And if there's a major accident on both of them, you just stay home because uh, you're not getting across the county. And, uh, you know, our county, uh, talking about going from one side to the other is sort of like uh, two roads into eternity. Here in Matthew chapter 7, look at verse 13. Jesus is speaking, and Jesus said, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So, just as traversing Pasco County, uh, you know, you really only have two choices if you want to go in a straight line and make decent time anyhow. There are only two roads that lead to eternity. And Jesus just told us what those two roads were. He said, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. The broad way. Hey, isn't that the name of a, a show or something somewhere, right? He said, that way is, it's broad. You know, and uh, that's sort of the default setting for humans. When we are born, we are we are born on that path, the Broadway. Then in verse fourteen, he said, "Straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it." There are some so-called preachers and Christian teachers out there uh, that are millionaires. And if you listen to their doctrine, uh, they're not right. There's that one fella in Texas. I'm not going to use his name. Because I I don't want it. it. It tastes bad coming out of my mouth. But he'll tell you he's not a he's not a, a preacher. He's a he's a teacher. But he has 
tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of followers. He's got his big uh, facility where tens of thousands assemble every time he has a meeting. He has books, he has television. But I heard this man saw a video where he was on uh, with Larry King. And whenever Larry King has a preacher of any sort on, he likes to ask this question. Can people go to heaven without believing in Jesus Christ? And he asked this fella, and he gave his big smile, and he said, well, you know, Larry, that's not my place to say. I like to focus on love and encouragement. You know, it's not my place to say either, but I don't have to say Jesus already did in his word. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But that's not popular. There's this this famous woman who, uh, if she were here today, she might say, and you get a car, and you get a car, and you get a car. <laughs> she has a big platform. And she likes inviting these heretics in and ask questions similar. And some of them will say, well... You don't have to necessarily believe like that. Folks, I'm here to tell you. Jesus said there are two roads that lead to eternity. One of them is the broad way that leads to hell and destruction. The other is the narrow and it leads to heaven. There are no sidetracks. There are no detours. Right? There are no bypasses. And there, everybody that is hearing me, whether you're here in person or watching online, you are on one of these two roads. Now, if you're on the narrow road, it's because you did what it took to get off the broad the broad way. And once you did what it took to get off the broad way, you're on that narrow road until you reach your final destination, amen, which is heaven. If you're on the broad way, if you do not do what is necessary, then you are going to spend eternity at the final destination of the broad way, and that is hell. Now, I hear people say, I don't think the loving God would send anybody to hell. And I always say, you are 100% correct. And my God is a loving God. My Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. You see that? He so loved. There was no adjective adequate enough to describe his love for us. He had to use the word so. He so loved the world. But his love for you will not save you. You must make a choice. The narrow way. Again, verse 14. Straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And we're talking about eternal life. That's what Jesus was talking about when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Was eternal life. Now here's the thing. Every single one of us here will exist forever. I was at the bedside of a gentleman who passed on Tuesday. And his earthly tabernacle that we call a body 
it quit working. It ceased to function. But dare I tell you, he was more alive. And he's more alive now in the presence of God than he was while he was trapped in this body of clay. See, we're going we're gonna to live for somewhere for eternity. Now, we, we talk about the second death, and that is where when your, your physical life is over and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. That is the second death. Why do we call it the second death? Because death is separation. When you die physically... Your soul and spirit is separated from your physical body. That's what death is, separation. But if you die physically, not having accepted Christ as your Savior, you will die spiritually. And you, you will be dead spiritually, and, and that is separated from Christ for all eternity. You don't want that. You do not want that. Jesus said, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. One mediator. And that's Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. That's the straight gate. That is Jesus Christ. Now, we live in a world that's okay with religion. The world is okay with religion. But they do not like this gate called Jesus. Now, those in the world that believe in hell, they don't want to go to hell. Nobody in their right mind wants to go to hell. But there are a lot of people that don't want to miss hell through this gate called Jesus. They want to be able to do the things that they want to do. Right? It's sort of like they want to have a foot in both worlds. I got one foot in the world where I can live and satisfy the flesh and do the things that the flesh wants done. But, you know, and sometimes it's not even a whole foot over here. They have a, you know, maybe it's the pinky toe. Right? Because they, listen, I, I'm religious enough that maybe I'll go to heaven. But I really like the fun. See, the world knows how to get you. And when I say the world, I'm talking about the world system. Uh, Satan is the prince of the power of the air of this world. And he will entrap you. Nightclubs. Right? I hear people talking about nightclubs all the time. And, and they don't understand people like me that don't go to nightclubs. Man, nightclubs are fun. You get to go and, and, and you get to live life. I'm living life now. Man. Right? I mean, I don't, I, I, I want to say I don't get them, but I do. They're sold out to the flesh and satisfying the lust of the flesh. You know, pursuing worldly pleasures. You know, oftentimes, folks that don't get people like us, right? Uh, before I got saved, I thought the Bible was full of don'ts. That's what the book was. A big no. There was no fun. Right? If you're saved, there, there was no fun. But that's not true. That is not true at all. You know, and uh, Satan likes to focus on what we don't get. You don't want to be a Christian because you can't do this. Or you can't do that. You can't do that. 
talking to somebody recently and I said, do you want to live to be 120? And they're like, no. I was like, well, me neither. I'm thankful that my body's lasted 57 years. You know, I can't imagine trying to go another 57 in this tabernacle of flesh. But suppose you could live to be 120. That is but a drop in the bucket compared to eternity. Let's say that while you're living that 120 years, you can satisfy the lust of the flesh continually, uh, unabated. But the trade-off is you spend eternity in hell. That's not a good deal. Now, before anybody misunderstands me, you're not going to go to hell because of things that you do. There's one thing that you do will send you to hell. And that's rejecting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Alright? So let's make sure. Religion does not like this game. Religion doesn't. Again, a lot of religions talk, talk about going to heaven. And some of them have some wild ideas about what heaven's going to be like. They got ideas that I don't find in God's word. <clears throat> and so sometimes they'll say because our, our leader got divine revelation directly from God. That's why you don't find it in the Bible. Hmm. Well, if somebody is teaching you about a divine revelation they got apart from God's word, mark them as a heretic Amen. and don't listen to them. Right. Now, the religions, they don't like this gate uh, because it's a straight gate. Their religions, they like ritual. They like rules. They like doctrine. Hey, I'm not against rules. I'm not against doctrine. As long as it comes from the Bible. And see, part of that is my Bible says whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Right? It's not by works of righteousness that we have done. Because the Bible says that all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. Filthy rags. So, stop and think a moment. What road are you on? If you're on the Broadway, you can get off that Broadway. Because every single one of us in here was on the Broadway until we met Jesus Christ. We accepted him and went through that narrow gate. Right? Right? Some people don't like this game because it's too easy. Have you ever talked to somebody about Jesus and you tell them how they could know for sure that they're saved and their attitude is no. There's got to be more to it than that. Right? You know why that is? Man, we think we have to do something. We have to do it. When salvation isn't of us, it's of God. Jesus Christ has done all that needed to be done to secure our salvation. All we have to do, yeah, we have to do something. We have to accept what Christ did. They don't like this narrow way. And I think I mentioned last week that... Uh, you know, in the past, I've been called a simpleton. And I've been called narrow-minded. Well, I think that's... A, I'm okay with that. You can call me whatever you want. Uh, I guess my narrow mind goes with the narrow way. Amen? Amen. And, and that's what Jesus said. He said, Narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And unfortunately, and few there be, that find it. Why, why is it few that find it? 
Is it because God is playing games? Anybody here ever play the shell game? You know, you got the three shells and somebody puts a ball underneath one or, or, a, or a Twinkie, even better, right? And then they start shuff, shuffling them around and, you know, you have to pick it and, you know, most people aren't successful. God is not like that. God does not say, listen, I have salvation for you, but if you can follow the right shell, and you pick the right shell, then ta-da! You can have salvation. No, God is very clear. God said, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I told you about the lady that uh, said point blank, I, I've never sinned. And she was serious. I have never sinned. I'm not a sinner. And her husband said, oh, yes, you are. Right? He was very vocal on her behalf. But you see, the first step to getting saved is acknowledging your need of a Savior. Yes. If you don't acknowledge that, then you can't be saved. Right? Because you, you have to understand your need before God can meet that need. You know there's an exception? Little ones that have not reached that point in their development where they can understand these things. And there are some folks that um, have mental issues that they will never understand these things. When they die, they go to heaven. They go to heaven because they, they can't make the decision to accept Christ or to reject Christ. Right? You take you take the twins. Well, Jedediah, Dakota, Aurora, Aloria. You know, a teary she's she's getting there, close. You can sit down and explain salvation to them. And they'll be like, I want it. Can I eat it? Right? They, they, they don't understand it. They can't comprehend it. And so God is not going to hold them accountable. Because they cannot comprehend it. And they cannot make a decision. But unless you're in one of those categories... You're going to be held accountable. And let, let me say this, and hopefully people will understand. And, um, if I had to die and go to hell, I wouldn't want to die and go to hell from the United States of America. You've heard the gospel. There are places in the world where they haven't heard the preaching of God's word. But yet they're going to die and go to hell without accepting Christ. But if you've been in church your whole life and you've heard the gospel preached your whole life and you reject Christ, mm, hell is certainly going to be, I believe, even worse for you than it is for somebody who hasn't heard. Now, these roads, you know, there are folks who are going to do their part to keep you on the Broadway. Friends want you to stay on the Broadway. Why is that? Well, the reason I got saved, my buddy believed misery loves company. Right? His parents made him come to church. He was miserable. I was the company. Same thing when it comes to sin. There are folks that they don't want to go to church. They don't want to think about God. They don't want to think about death. They want to think about having fun and, and, and satisfying the flesh. And they want their buddies with them. 
And if one of their buddies starts thinking about God, they will do all they can to persuade them not to. And you know, one of the groups that does this is family. You know, there are, there are Christians around the world that they have gotten saved and their family has disowned them. There are some cultures where their family buried an empty casket saying that it's them because they're dead to them. <clears throat> if you grew up in a tight-knit family and your family had that kind of attitude, I can see where it can prevent somebody from accepting Christ. Even though they know that's what they need to do. You know, they'll make fun and ridicule the narrowness of the gate. All right? When I first got saved, uh, there were people I worked with that they, they made fun of me because uh, I was, they, they called me straight laced. And there was a rock song on the radio. And part of the lyrics was, you don't dance, you know, something rather, what do you, you know, what do you do, you know, goody two shoes, whatever. And, and so whatever that would come on, they'd say, hey, this is your song, right? Um, I didn't care. But there are people that will give in to that kind of peer pressure. You know, when we think about peer pressure, we think about somebody being pressured into doing something wrong. But it works the other way. Some people will try to pressure you from accepting Christ. And you say, well, why would somebody do this? Why, why does somebody else care if you accept Christ? Because when an individual accepts Christ, their world changes. Most of the time, they don't have to lose their, leave their friends. Their friends leave them. And they do this because they don't want you to leave them on the Broadway by themselves. Now, they may not be aware of that, but they're aware of you're, you're a friend that they like to have fun with. And they don't want to lose that. The Broadway is very wide and easily entered because it offers no opposition to the lust of the flesh. That's where you're going naturally anyway. Right? There are people that say, hey, this is the only life you're ever going to get. You might as well live it up. Live it up. I think another reason that folks stay on the Broadway is, well, simply Satan. He appears as an angel of light. You know, the world has done a real good job. I was talking to somebody this week, and a lot of the world look at people like me. I believe in literal demons. And a lot of people in the world will look at me and, and say I'm crazy. You know, they, they'll make fun of me. And Satan has done a good job uh, through Hollywood. He has people, when they think of Satan, they think of him in two ways. One, he's the little fellow wearing red pajamas carrying a pitchfork. Right? Who's afraid of him? He's laughable. Then the other way is that, that they per se portray Satan and demons is they're hideous. Right? If one of the Hollywood type demons were to come down in this room and manifest itself physically in front of everybody, we'd all we'd all scream and run because they are ugly, you know, they're hideous. But that's not what the Bible says. Satan appears as an angel of light. 
Satan was the prettiest angel God created. He was beautiful. So if Satan were, able, were to literally appear in front of you, you'd be drawn to him if you didn't have discernment. You'd say, oh, look how beautiful. Right? And in the world today, if it's beautiful, it has to be of God. It has to be good. That's how Satan gets people. Right? It's like I've said before. If sin wasn't fun, nobody would sin. Right? If sin was like sitting down and having to eat a bunch of broccoli, nobody would do it. <laughs> right? I certainly wouldn't. Some of you might. but So sin is fun. Sin appeals to the flesh, right? And so Satan is doing a good job of making the Broadway so appealing. Anybody in here that doesn't want to have fun? See, I like having fun, right? I like cutting up. You know, I, I, I like being with with uh, friends and family and, and just having a good time. Well, Satan says you, you can't belong to God and have a good time. Well, that goes back to what do you define as a good time? Right? I mean, I can look at my life before Christ and, and things that I had done growing up uh, and I look and I'm amazed that I'm alive. It's only by God's grace uh, that I'm alive. He protected me. You know, I, I'm so thankful that uh, when I was young, dumb, there weren't video cameras everywhere like there are now. Uh, you know, the only reason I, I've lived to be old and wise, hopefully, is that God protected me when I was young and dumb. But Satan is going to appeal to the lust of the flesh. Satan likes to, as I said earlier, try to convince people that the narrow way is for the narrow-minded. Nitwits. Y'all know what uh, this month is, supposedly. Went from a day to being a month Thanks to that fellow in the White House. And it's it's a it's a shame. You know, when 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 they had that Pride Day, uh, it was a shame that they were uh, celebrating their sin. But now they've designated a whole month for this. You know, and I, I saw a thing on Facebook where they were talking about uh, the prey that they normally have that is going to be drawn out for the whole month. Right. And somebody said, you know, y'all need to keep the vulgarity out of it. Oh, the way that person was attacked. You know, you're narrow-minded. Well, praise God. Okay. Amen. And your point? You know, all right, I'm narrow-minded. That fits the narrow way. All right? But the world, they look at us and they they and, and I think this is all planning for the rapture of the church. Is that when the church is taken out, I think the attitude of the world is going to be, yay, the troublemakers are gone. Amen. Right? Because when you're of the narrow way and you're of the narrow mind, you're not going to, you're not going to go along to get along. God didn't call me to go along to get along. God called me to be holy as he is holy. Right? <clears throat> the world doesn't like that. You're on a road. You're either on the narrow way. Now, again, every single one of us started on the broad way. My, my little grandbabies, as they grow, if they, as they are now, they're on the broad way. That's the natural 
course is the broad way. So my job, not, not simply because I'm a pastor and preacher, but my job as the patriarch of my family is to help those little ones go to the narrow way. Right? I, I praise God, able to do it with my children. Now it's not hands off. Hey, I raised mine. No, I'm there to support my children so that my grandchildren will leave the broad way, leaving them to destruction and get on the narrow way That's right. that leads to life. Amen. And if the Lord allows me enough years on the earth to become a great grandfather, that job's still not done. That's right. That job's still not done. Praise God, there came a time <coughs> when the Lord got a hold of my heart and he showed me what was at the end of the Broadway. He showed it to me. And I realized I didn't want that. And truth be told, all the things that I was doing all the sinful activity that I was doing that I thought was so much fun really wasn't. That was a lie from Satan that I swallowed. With all due respect, don't mean to gross anybody out before lunch, but I don't consider puking your guts out fun. <laughs> no. Do you? If you do, don't raise your hand. <laughs> Right? Satan says, oh, this is fun. Oh, listen, God got a hold of me. He showed me what was on that road. Then he showed me the narrow way and what was at the end of the road that his son provided. The narrow way that leads to life. Which road are you on? You know, on this road, there, there are no, uh, praise God, there are no roundabouts. There are no parking lanes where you get to pull off and wait and make a decision. No. You're, you're going towards the end of this road. If you're on the narrow way, praise God, all right? We look at the condition of the world and we say, even, uh, even so, come Lord Jesus. Because that'll be a relief. But if you're on the, the broad way, there is no relief for you at the end. There is no big party where you're going to get together with all your friends at the end. You might get together, but it's not going to be a party. Which road are you on? You're moving. Right? You're moving. There There are no parking lanes. None of that. It, it's a road, and you're going to be moving forward. What's your destination? You know, your destination is entirely up to you. You can choose to head towards hell and destruction, or you can get off the Broadway and enter that narrow gate and find life. Entirely up to you. Let's stand at our feet, if you will. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Christians praying. No one looking around. The invitation is going to be simple. Very simple. If you find yourself on the broad way, let me encourage you to yield to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will convict you of your sin and he will draw you unto God, unto salvation. Let me encourage you to do that if, you, if you're on the broad way. If you're on the narrow way, let me encourage you to do your part to get people off of the broad way. Introduce them to Jesus Christ. Tell them about him. Our Heavenly Father, again, as we bow in your presence, we're thankful that we have this opportunity. We look in your word and we see that it's either one or the other. It's either broad way or the narrow way. 
There's no third option. There's no waiting. There's no place to pull over and wait. But Lord, we can get off that Broadway onto the narrow way. I ask that you would continue to work in the hearts of your folks that are here, those that are watching online, that you would have your will and your way in each and every life. I ask that you'd help us to yield to the leading of the Holy Spirit, regardless of any fear that we may have. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Miss Beth's going to play. If you need to come for any reason, please come on the first verse. <laughs> Thanks for having